Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these weekly videos where I talk about some of the work that I've been getting up to and then we talk about some of the stuff that's been going on in the wider Inkscape project. Um, apologies for not releasing a video last week, I was really, really sick. Um, I hope you'll um, take this update video as an opportunity for us to catch up. Um, okay, so what's been going on? Um, I've been mostly dealing with the color stuff, I'll be honest, but I wanted to talk about some of the improvements and fixes that I've put into the export dialogue. Um, the export dialogue is the way that you can basically take uh, your SVG and turn it into a uh, raster image, a PNG. Uh, many years ago, I had the ability to do JPEG and, and TIFF and other stuff. And in 1.3, I think we had the ability to do PDF and SVG. Um, so all of the functionality of the export dialogue over time has improved. Um, but before we get into the actual fixes, let me give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Uh, basically, my work here on Inkscape is funded by you guys. Uh, you subscribe to my Patreon, you subscribe to my LibrePay. Uh, some very kind souls actually just send me money by PayPal, which is nice. Um, and through that, I'm able to basically spend time dedicated to fixing issues that basically mostly concern you guys. Um, so thank you for that. So what are we talking about with the export and dialogue? Let, let me bring it into the screen for you. So this is the export dialogue and <clears throat> it's got two basic modes, a um, single export and a batch export. And both had some issues. So let's start off with the single, single file export. Um, the, these issues were actually basically just the file name. Uh, whenever you updated any of these properties, the um, file name would change. Um, and sometimes it would just delete or sometimes it would just add lots of dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash into the path name, basically forgetting where it was supposed to be saving this. Often this wasn't so much of an issue if your SVG and your PNG export were in the exact same folder. Um, and so you, you basically uh, had no parent fol folders and it, and it mostly worked okay then. Um, but if you were saving PDFs in some other place or PNGs in some other place or a parent directory or a child directory, it would get very confused very quickly. Um, so I put in a bunch of fixes um, to basically allow it to more concisely populate the field when it's empty with a reasonable um, value, um, read the value of the, out of the SVG correctly in some instances, um, correctly interpret what the relative path should be and limit the number of jumps that it will do in a parent path in order to decide whether it is an absolute or relative path. Um, an absolute path is basically just, you know, uh, if you're on Windows, it'd be like C colon slash blah, 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 blah. That's an absolute path. A relative path is say your SVG is in my documents um, and the PNG that you save is in my documents forward slash uh, temp then a relative path is temp forward slash something else. Um, and basically it takes the, the SVG's location as the, as the parent. Um, so yeah, we, we, we wanted to limit how many jumps it would do before it started uh, making uh, relative paths. <clears throat> okay, so that's the, that's the issues with the, with the single file exporter. Now batch exporter was actually more, more uh, in, intensive because um, not only were there, was there a whole bunch of issues with the um, file name selector, which was completely inappropriate, um, it was just not really intuitive. So what I've done is I've completely replaced the file uh, export uh, box, in, and now it's just a directory selector. So you have a batch exporter, you're selecting the um, directory that you want all of these files to be generated into, that's the first thing that you want, basically, like, put them all in here. And then the rest of it is about, um, you know, the suffix and the file names and, and everything else can now just, just be focused on the rest of the batch exporter. And there's a few little click cleanups with, with that as well. Um, this should make it more clear about what's going on. Okay, other fi fixes that have gone in, uh, this is thanks to Chris Rod Rogers. Um, there were some 
bugs when it came to exporting things with clones. Uh, sometimes clones would be missing, sometimes clones would be there and they shouldn't be. Um, I rewrote a whole bunch of stuff. Um, basically, basically what I had to do is I had to make code that could tell whether a an object was linked to another another object. Basically, like this is a clone of this other object, or this clone is a clone of this other object, right? In both directions. Uh, our code was kind of um, a mess. So what I did is I refactored the whole thing. I wrote tests for it as we do now. We write tests now. And uh, Raphael managed to um, uh, accept that merge request last week, which is great. I'm very happy with the uh, quality of, of, of that work. But the upshot is, is that it should allow this uh, export dialog to correctly decide when to include a clone, when not to. Um, it also applies to things like uh, path shapes and uh, other things where you have a link between two objects and you want to decide whether if you're exporting it, uh, like this doesn't really matter for a PNG export, I should say. This is m mostly to do with um, PDF exports sometimes, uh, SVG exports almost always, um, because the, you're going to see things that are sitting off of the can canvas when you export it as an SVG, uh, because it has to make a decision about what things to delete. Um, okay, so th those are the things that I've been working on with the export di di dialog. I'm just going to focus on this, this this week. There is other stuff, but I can't really get into all the color stuff. It's not even done yet. Um, so so stay, stay tuned with that, but I am pretty excited about the code qu quality that's going on in, in the color branch right, right now. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the things that are going on in the Inkscape project more widely. Uh, the big news is that Inkscape will not be releasing a version 1.4 based upon GTK4. Uh, just to catch you guys all up, uh, Inkscape invested about $100,000 in 2023 in order to pay contractors to work on the GTK4 implementation of Inkscape. This is a new widget frame framework that should allow Inkscape to work both most, uh, should allow Inkscape to work faster and also open the door to us doing proper uh, graphics card GL based rendering. Um, it that project is still on on going and a recent assessment by by the developer team found that essentially we were not going to hit our targets for when this would be of a sufficient quality to call it a release so what we're proposing instead is that we're going to do a final uh, gtk3 based inkscape which is the same widget framework that we currently use um and then we are going to, you know, bundle all of the fixes and other things that we've managed to conclude for this release into that. Um, and then we will release the version after that will be GTK4. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're probably going to release a snapshot version of the GTK4 one because we are definitely going to need testers. We're going to need people like yourselves to, to just try it out and see where it's breaking. Uh, because when you do this kind of like really intensive frame framework refactoring, all sorts of things will break. And if you remember the version 1.0 of Inkscape, which was uh, particularly bad, uh, it was bad for that exact same reason. We moved from GTK2 to GTK3 and a whole bunch of stuff broke. And we made a release. We, we, we called that we would make the release uh, anyway. And it turned out that that wasn't the, I don't think, the correct decision to make. And we needed to have more um, pre-releases so that adventurous testers could actually just hammer out all of the really big issues uh, and then we could make a more solid release after that. Um, this also does mean that the color refactoring work probably won't make it into 1.4. Um, it's just that, I, I don't know, like it might do but like I can't see it. It's, it's, it's taking me a lot longer to do than I expected. So I also have timeline issues with my own work, uh, but it's also a factor of just how much refactoring it requires, like how much of the code base has to change in order to make this uh, work um, appropriate. Uh, and I'm seeing that it it's going to cause issues. Like I, I just can't foresee every single corner case that I may have broken um, and I'm going to need that same testing. Um, it likes to be good to do the, the, the color te testing at the same time as the GTK4 testing, just because we'll have a really intensive uh, sort of like new Inkscape, refactored Inkscape um, experience, and we'll be able to maybe focus some um, advertising around it or some some like uh, community build building to get people involved. 
Um, okay, so let me know in the comments about what you think about the um, the work. Let me know what you think about the plans that Inkscape have are uh, trying to develop to keep things both stable and also keep things moving forwards. I'm always interested to know your comments uh, and what things are affecting you. And um, yeah, we'll talk next week more about some of the other work that I've done. Um, and please do consider sponsoring me. I am uh, continuing to try and improve and build up my Patreon this year. Um, and if you know anybody or any groups that use Inkscape and you think they might be in, in, interested in getting involved, uh, send them these videos. Uh, feel free to share on as many social media plat platforms as you can. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Oh, and um, yeah, this 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 screen is uh, my little screen on a, on an arm, and um, it's been very it's been very nice. I've got to say. Uh, but one thing I did learn when I was setting up this video is that uh, it's very bright, and so you couldn't even see my face because the 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 ring lights uh, wouldn't illuminate my face more then this, the brightness of this would affect the cam camera. Um, oh well, I guess I'll, I'll either have to turn this down every, every week or I'll have to uh, do, do recordings in, in the daytime instead of the middle of the night. <laughs> nah. <laughs>